Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. Good morning, my name is Pia McAdams and welcome to Transform Your Life in 15 Minutes. I am an author, I'm also an accounting professor and a certified life coach. I specialize in personal and small business finance and also fitness. I help people reach their goals. And on this uh, live morning broadcast, we're gonna be doing five minute exercises, one each for the mind, the body, and also the soul. Now, before we get started, I want you to know two main things about this mind section. Number one, it's gonna be a short little lesson. It's gonna take you, what, maybe five minutes to learn, but a lifetime to master. And number two, I want you to understand this. I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm just here to help you unlock what's already with inside of you. So I want to go ahead and welcome you. Good morning, Nell Bell. Good to see you watching this morning. So welcome all of you. If this is your first time watching me, I welcome you. And if you've also been before, like my friend Nell Bell, um, my good friend Nell Bell, then again, welcome and thank you for joining me. So today we're going to be talking about triumphs. And by the way, um, on this live session, this mind session, we're doing that stories based upon this book by Kim Coles called Open Your Gifts. And gifts is an acronym that stands for gratitude, intentions, um, forgiveness, triumphs, and also self-love. So now we're on the triumph. So we're going to be talking about like stories about triumphs. So I want to talk about three different stories to you. The first one is Helen Keller. Okay. Helen Keller, as you know, was deaf and blind, right? But that didn't stop her from learning sign language and then stop her from earning a bachelor's degree and writing over 12 books and numerous articles. Okay, numerous articles. She didn't let that little circumstance of her stop her. She she triumphed despite of it. And then we have, of course, Beethoven. Now, if you're not familiar with Beethoven's story, he actually began to lose his hearing at the height of his career and he eventually became completely deaf. But guess what? He didn't let that stop him from composing many symphonies, including Symphony Number no. 9, which is known as one of the best known classical pieces today, which by the way, he didn't hear a single note of that symphony. So he didn't let that limitation stop him, right? He triumphed over it. And then of course we have Edison, okay? Thomas Edison, as you know, or you may not know, Thomas Edison actually displayed like learning disabilities. You know, back in the day there wasn't no diagnosis, but he actually did display some signs of learning disabilities. And he fell like over 10,000 times, literally 10, over 10,000 times. And also he suffered a loss where his laboratory burnt down. He lost all of his lab records and millions of dollars of equipment. But guess what? That still did not stop him from successively um, inventing the light bulb. Okay, so what is the moral of these stories? The moral of the stories is this. Circumstances mean nothing. Limitations mean nothing. Obstacles mean nothing. It all comes down to you, okay, to you. You get to decide how you want to be in those circumstances or how you handle those circumstances. Are you going to let them, you know, set you back or, you know, are you going to, are you going to triumph in spite of the circumstances that you're suffering right now? All right. And as far as limitations, you decide on whether or not it's going to limit you or not. Are you going to let those limitations totally stop you? Or are you going to like move past them, you know, get above them, you know, treat them as like minor setbacks, if you will. All right. And then obstacles, you decide whether or not you're going to let the obstacles stop you or you're going to move fiercely and boldly ahead. You know, life is too short not to live up to your full potential. So I want you to understand it all comes down to you. All right, so hopefully this was helpful for you. And guys, please share this information with people that need to hear it. You know, life is hard. I get it. We all go through it. But it's just nice to have like some encouraging stories and, and to hear things of other people and what they've gone through. So you can see that, you know what, maybe in your circumstance, you say, oh, you know what, this is maybe not so bad. It's all in the way that you decide to, re to frame it. Okay, so remember, it all comes down to you. All right, so that concludes our mind portion. So now we're gonna move on to the body portion of it. And this is where we're gonna be doing some yoga. This is a five minute exercise, guys. The next two sessions, the yoga and also the meditation practices. So I'm inviting you to join with me. It's not enough to just watch me. By the way, as you can see, I'm like my hair is kind of wet and I'm a little sweaty and kind of like winded. I just finished teaking, teaking. <laughs> I haven't eaten either, but I just finished teaching a cycle class that started at 5.30 this morning, which is why I started this broadcast late. Late, So, you know, again, it's not, it's all about how you decide to frame it, okay? Don't say, hey, give me all these excuses, but I'm too tired. That's why I almost forgot my phone. I'm too tired of this, that, and the other. I'm still in a bed, or I'm getting ready for work, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that you're not getting ready for work. Maybe you are. But uh, guess what? Sometime during this day, take five minutes for yourself. You know, you deserve it. 
And, and if you're not treating yourself with kindness, how do you expect other people to treat you with kindness? All right, so with that being said, I'm inviting you to join me on this next section. And this is going to be, again, a yoga. This is where we're going to actively go internal to see what's going on inside of you right now in this present moment. Like what's going on inside as far as your body's concerned? Are there any aches, any pains, any stresses, any negativities that you feel, any specific areas in your body that are tight? We're going to use our breath to loosen up those areas and focus on those areas and release the, the tension, the stress, whatever it is that's holding you back, all right? So in this position, I mean today's position, we're going to start off in what? Yes, tabletop, one of my favorite ones to start off with. So you're going to be on your hands and knees. And then um, before you get started, always remember, take your three deep breaths to center and ground yourself, okay? And then after you do that, I want you to then set an intention of what it is that you want to accomplish for this next five minutes during your practice of yoga, okay? So do those three things before you get started. So as you get into tabletop and you're kind of moving around and seeing what's going on inside of you, get yourself centered, grounded, and aligned by taking those three deep ujjayi breaths, and then make sure that you set your intentions, okay? All right, go ahead and join me on the mat. Good morning, Joseph. You're just in time to join me for yoga. Meet me on the mat and let's get started. All right, so your palms are directly underneath your shoulders. Your knees are directly underneath your hips. Your head is in alignment with the spine, which, by the way, is nice and neutral, so you're not rounded and you're not arched. Just have a nice neutral spine and again as you just kind of go internal see what's going on inside of you take those three nice deep ujjayi breaths get yourself centered grounded and aligned and then of course i want you to set your intention on what it is that you want to accomplish for this next five minutes and as you complete that go ahead and take a nice deep breath and as you exhale, once you drop your chin down towards your chest, and once you round through your spine, once you tuck your tailbone under, press those shoulders down and away from your ears. And as you inhale, your head and chest comes forward. Go ahead and arch your back, stick your tailbone out towards the back of the room. Again, still press those shoulder blades down. And as you exhale, round through the spine, tuck your tailbone under. Let's do that one more time. As you inhale, head and chest comes forward. But this time as you exhale, I want you to curl those toes under and I want you to take it to downward facing dog. Adho Mukhasavasana. And start to pedal your legs. Head stays in line with your biceps. You're pressing your chest toward your thighs and your knees. Relaxing those shoulders, always pushing them down and away from your ears. Lift the kneecaps to get a nice gentle stretch on the hamstring. And as you continue to keep your palms down flat, I want you to slowly walk your feet in toward your palms. And if you need to, go ahead and bend your knees so that you keep your palms down against the mat. And when you get your, palm, your feet up close to the palms, I want you to then slowly round yourself up, taking it one vertebrae at a time. Just go ahead and take your time. Gently stack the vertebrae on top of each other and then slowly making sure that your head is the last to rise. And let's come to Tadasana, which is known as Mountain Pose. All right, so your feet are together slightly this hip distance apart, just slightly apart, depending on what feels comfortable to you. And then you want to make sure that your chest is lifted, your sternum is lifted up, your shoulders are drawn down and back, and your head is the natural extension of the spine. The chin right there is a string attached from the crown of your head all the way up towards the ceiling. Fingertips pointing down toward the earth. Now as you inhale, you're going to draw those arms up overhead, and as you exhale, I want you to dive the body forward. As you inhale, take it all the way up. And as you exhale, swan dive your body all the way forward. Inhale, take it all the way up. This time, kind of arch back for me. And as you exhale, swan dive your body all the way forward. And this time, as you inhale, let you look up halfway. Flatten out the back, tailbone sticks out towards the back of the room. And as you exhale forward, fold into the Uttanasana. As you place your palms down flat, I want you to step back, right, left into the plank. As you continue exhaling, I want you to release your knees, then your chest, and then your chin. And as you inhale, you're going to bring your body to upward facing dog. Uncurl those toes, relax those shoulders down and away from your ears. And then we're going to curl the toes under and take it to downward facing dog. Now as you inhale, I want you to bring that right foot in towards your fingertips and I want you to press that right knee down towards the mat 
uncurl the toes, lift your palms up towards the sky, and take it all the way back, just as far as it feels comfortable to you, trying to keep your head in alignment with your bicep. You're pressing your hips down towards the mat, your knee is directly over the ankle, and we're taking it to the low lunge. So open up that chest and continue to breathe. As you exhale, go ahead and release. Take your arms down, take that right leg back, swing your legs over, actually keep your right leg out, extend it out towards the side. Take your arms down, making sure that your knee is directly underneath that shoulder, that left knee, and as you inhale, we're gonna take the arms up, and as you exhale, you're gonna slide that right arm down, left arm goes up and over. Now again, don't drop your torso, keep your chest nice and lifted, and again, you're not placing, placing any pressure on the shin or on your leg as you slide that fingertips down toward your ankle. As you inhale, take it all the way up and then release it down. Draw the breath again, this time. As you exhale, once you place your left arm on your hip, right arm goes up and over, feel free to stay here or take your left fingertips down toward the mat and then lean down forward. Again, relax the shoulders, keep your crown drawn away from your ears. Now your head is looking up toward the sky. There's too much strain and stress in your neck. You can always feel free to look forward, or you can also look down. All right, as you inhale, go ahead and release it up. Take the foot back. Bring the both palms down flat. Take it to the plank position. And then knee, chest, chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana. As you inhale, bring the body forward to upper facing dog. And as you exhale, curl the toes under. Take the body to down facing dog. Now on your next breath, you're going to bring that left foot in toward the fingertips. Place that right knee down toward the mat. Uncurl the toe and let's take it up to the low lunge. Remember, open up your chest, feel the expansion, breathing in all the positive energy. Taking your time, use a nice deep Ujjayi breath. Relaxing those shoulders. And then exhale, release it down. This time, swing both legs back. This time, the left leg is going to take it out toward the side. Arms go up. And as you inhale, take the left arm down toward the left leg. Right arm goes up and over. Breathing in as you stretch on that right side. Press the right shoulder, the left shoulder down and away from the ears. Remember, you're using your nice, deep, huge eye breaths. Inhaling through your nose. Exhaling through your mouth. Release on the exhale. Inhale, take both arms up. This time as you exhale, right arm goes up over to your chin, or to your shoulder, your hip. Left arm goes, right arm goes up and over. I say your left arm goes up and over. Right arm stays here, or you can take it down toward the mat, fingertips down toward the mat, and give her a deeper stretch on that side. Feel the nice long extension from the fingertips all the way down toward your toes. And just breathe in all of that positive energy. Now from this position, you're just going to rotate so that both of your palms come flat. Then you're going to take it back to the plank. And again, release your knee, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana. Inhale. This time as you exhale, curl the toes under and take them down facing dog. Now from here, I want you to release your knees, both knees down toward the mat. Uncurl the toes and slowly lower your body down as you exhale. Inhale from this position, and as you exhale, you're going to take it up to the cobra. Relax the shoulders. Inhale, release it down. Exhale, take it up. This time looking over that right shoulder. And exhale, release down. This time as you take it up, looking over the opposite shoulder. Remember, just going up as far as comfortable to you. Release down. Draw the breath in again. This time as you exhale, you're going to push your body back to child's pose with the extended arms. Now go ahead and press your fingertips down toward the mat. Give a nice long extension from the fingertips to the shoulder blades. Crown your head to the tailbone. Lift the knees, top of the knees to the toes. Then you're going to place your palms down flat. You're going to curl your toes under and take it to downward facing dog. Now for him, you're gonna slowly walk your feet in. This time the left leg comes forward. Walk it in slowly toward your palms. Keep your palms down flat. 
Then we're going to take our fingertips and clasp the outer edges of our elbows and forward fold into Uttanasana. Now in this position, the crown of your head pulls your body weight naturally forward. As you inhale, just kind of hold your position. And as you exhale, surrender into the stretch, into the pose. Release the tightness in the hip flexors. And then slowly release the fingertips down towards the mat. Slowly take it up. Again, always making sure you take it one vertebrae at a time. Take your time. Your head is going to be the last to rise. And we bring it back to Tadasana. As we inhale, fingertips go up towards the sky. Swan dive your body forward. Place the palms down flat. Walk your feet out towards the edges of the mat. And as you exhale, release the tailbone down towards the mat. Bring the palms together and heart center. Bow your head down into Malasana. And go ahead and give some gratitude. Again, you're using the triceps or the outer part of your elbows to push down those inner thighs. Open up your hips. Then release your palms down to the mat. Slowly take them back to behind you. And then transition yourself into a comfortable seated position facing forward. You're sitting up nice and tall on your sits bones, not the fleshy part of your tush. Fingertips down by the side, chest is lifted. As you inhale, take those arms up. And as you exhale, go ahead and release them back down toward the earth. Again, nice deep breath, inhaling, bringing in all that positive energy. Exhale, release it down. Releasing the stress, tension, negative energy. One more time, nice deep breath, inhaling, bringing in all that positive energy. This time we're going to bring our palms together at the very top. And as we exhale, we're going to bring our palms together at heart center. And then we say, Namaste. All right, thank you for taking the time to practice this yoga with me. Now we move on to the meditation. For the meditation, it's going to be a small two-minute exercise. And on this meditation, what you're going to be doing is, of course, after we center and ground and align ourselves, we always start off from that position, okay, of being centered, grounded, and aligned. You also, of course, set your intention of what it is that you want to accomplish. Now, the exercise is this. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be breathing normally for two minutes, okay? So don't try to manipulate your breath at any time. Just breathe as you normally would. But I want you to count your exhales, okay? So just count your exhales. And then at any time during this two minutes, you become distracted. At about outside noises or internal noises known as thoughts, I want you to first acknowledge the distraction. And then bring your attention back to your breath, continue your counting, but start all over at count number one. So for example, let's say that you're counting and you get up to count number two. And then all of a sudden you remember, oh, it's money, I gotta do this. Go ahead and acknowledge what it is that you have to do. Bring your attention back to your breath, start counting, and you're gonna start over with number one. All right, so we're gonna do that for two minutes. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take our nice three deep ujjayi breaths. Feel free to close your eyes doing this so you can keep them open. And the third one, you can close it. All right, so go ahead and take a nice deep ujjayi breath. Inhale it through your nose. And as you exhale, release it through your mouth. Again, nice deep breath. Inhale it through your nose. And exhale it through your mouth. One more time, nice deep breath, inhale into your nose. This time as you exhale, go ahead and close your eyes, release through your mouth. Now continue your regular breathing, begin counting now.
Alrighty, go ahead, release, relax, and return refreshed and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. Thank you for taking the time to meditate with me, and also thank you for taking the time to watch this transform your life in 15 minutes. Guys, please share this information, this broadcast with your family and your friends. And for your word today is delightful. I want you to have a very delightful Monday, and I will see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Bye.